Blessings in the name of the Lord Jesus. Welcome to Paraclet TV, making disciples to the power of the Holy Spirit. We are now in the center of Iloilo City. Here is the heart, which is the Iloilo capital and besides is the Museo Iloilo. We will now visit this museum so that you will see the artifacts, some of the important things that are collected within the museum. By the Philippine government outside Metro Manila. And this museum is already 49 years old. The museum has three sections. We have the Art Gallery 1, the Art Gallery 2, and the Hall of Permanent. The exhibits in the Art Gallery 1 and 2 changes from time to time. Now we are having the art exhibits of Noma Bonongo artists. And the title is to make it, meaning they are making use or recycled materials from their own uh, art materials in order to make another new artwork. So you will see their work. During the 14th and 15th century, the Philippines were already producing secondary art material. Once the body are already skeleton, they are placed in the coffins. Those two coffins came from Romlon. Romlon is an island north of Panay, and this coffin came from Isla de Gigantes, the northernmost island of Iloilo, and it was already attacked by the termite when it was transferred here. And this body was excavated from Oton Municipality, 8 kilometers south of Iloilo City, and that it has a gold mask covering the eyes and the nose, but the original gold mask is already in the National Museum, and that is only a The skeleton in the coffins that you have seen are examples of the remains from a historical burial of ancient Egypt. Burial alternatives from an early age we are all aware of where we are heading, six feet under. But little did we know that the 21st century would mix things up a bit. Let us look at some non-common burial alternatives. First, the tree burial. Tree burial practices are often unheard of but are common in places such as the Philippines to protect the bodies from wild animals. This strange burial practice takes place by putting bodies in a tree or embedding them in a tree trunk. Second, cryonics. It is still being researched to this day and is often used for people who are brain dead. It is the process of being frozen. By freezing the body, it is believed that the person could one day be revived through advances in technology. Cryogenic freezing is the method of being frozen without damaging tissue. Next, we have the tree planting. One of the newest talk about burials is having your ashes placed into soil with a seed that is plant a tree which doesn't affect the tree's DNA. This is a wonderful way of being buried by being great for the environment and giving a special meeting place for family and friends to gather and remember the dead. Next, aquamation. It is a procedure of being bathed in water, which speeds up the deterioration process. This obviously isn't the nicest way to dispose of or bury a body. However, some see it as a better alternative to being burned in a furnace. Next, resumation. It is an eco-friendly burial method that decomposes the body using an alkali and water-based solution under high pressure. This breaks down the body to a liquid and bone ash. The liquid can be recycled into the ecosystem by pouring it into a garden or nature, similar to the spreading of ashes while the bones ash is collected and placed into an urn. There are still other ways of burial because of the advances in technology. Let me unearth biblical truths in this sharing. It is important that our dead are given respect and honor, but it is more important to think what happens to the soul after death. Soul is translated nefesh in the Old Testament 
and suke in the New Testament. There are also passages in the Bible where souls include our spirit. There are, however, two places in the New Testament where the word suke does seem to be describing the dual nature as soulish creatures. In Matthew 10, 28, And do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body and hell. In 2 Corinthians 5, 1-4, for we know that if the earthly tent which is our house is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. For indeed in this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven, inasmuch as we, having put it on, shall not be found naked. For indeed, while we are in this tent, we groan, being burdened, because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be clothed in order that what is mar mortal may be swallowed up by life. In these two passages, a clear distinction is drawn between the body and the soul. As Matthew and Paul describe, our dual nature as physical beings with immaterial, everlasting souls. These souls cannot be destroyed by the death of the body. Paul calls the souls our house, made by God. As soon as we are away from the body, we are at home with the Lord. There are nature of the souls. We are immortal living souls. There are the two realities in the universe, the unseen, immaterial, spiritual realm, in the visible, physical, material world. The soul does exist and we, in fact, are living souls. Souls return to God. The spiritual world is the realm of God, and as living souls, we are spiritual beings. Therefore, the moment we are not living in the physical world, we will be living in the spiritual world. This is being described in Luke 16, 19 to 31. The souls or the spirit can be in heaven, where one enjoys everlasting peace, or in hell, eternal torment. Souls are active. Even after our bodies die as living souls, we are not possibly waiting for our resurrection bodies. In the time between our physical death and our resurrection at the second coming of Christ, we will not be in the state of dormancy. In Matthew 17, 1-3, And after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John into high mountain and was transfigured before them. His face did shine as the sun, and raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. So we will see that Jesus have a lot of things discussed between Moses and Elias. And this was witnessed by Peter, James, and John. Souls are subject to God's judgment. Physical death does not end our life. God has complete control over our true life, or the living souls. And our final death is not dependent on our body, but is instead dependent on our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. In Luke 23, 39-43, there is a story about the two male factors besides Jesus on the cross. One said, If thou art the Christ, save us. But the other said, after rebuking him, Lord, remember me when thou comest into your kingdom. And Jesus answered, Very I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. How to spend our life after death? Let us be sure that we will be spending it in heaven with Jesus. Admit your sins, humble down, and repent, and then ask Jesus to be your Savior. God bless you. Share Subscribe, Jesus. Subscribe, share, share. Go, go, go.